around and trade them for a package of sunshine and ravioli. Macaroni, if you want the thing you love. You did it! Congratulations! Great job, everybody. It's great to meet you. Hi. Always got a kick out of that scene from Elf. Uh, this the self-proclaimed world's best is always uh, it's always great. Uh, so what we're doing today is we're going to give you a piece of one of our courses just to show you what our training is like. Uh, and you can decide whether or not it's the world's best. Uh, that's uh, totally up to you. Uh, but this is from our dynamic mill course. This is looking at the 2D uh, high-speed dynamic milling toolpaths. And this course is about three, just over three hours long of video content. And there's roughly 30 some odd Mastercam files in there for you to have some demo files and some exercise files. And this video here is from the 2D dynamic mill section of it, talking about the parameters on the cut parameters page. So if you want to follow along to the video, there's a download link below. You can click on download the file. Uh, and there's more parameters and more tool paths in there for you to look at uh, outside of this video. But that file will at least allow you to follow along uh, with this video. And with that, let's hop into this video and we'll get going and uh, we'll leave the decision on uh, the rankings up to you. Next up, we're gonna have a look at this guy here, uh, gaps and motions. And I'm not sure if I should rename this or not. So uh, a while back, this this setting, well, this is the, the area we're looking at right here, these these uh, these boxes in here. Um, and before this, this setting here used to be called gap size. And this down here used to be called motion greater than gap size. So so we need to really show what's going on here to, in order to, to see the effect because at first thought you're going to see this setting here being called keep tool down within and you'll suspect that if you set this to a low value that you'll see more retracts within your tool path. Uh, so what's going to happen here um, with this setting the way it is never down here and we're set to 500% of the keep tool down within 500% which we're using a half inch tool. So basically our setting right here now is set at 2.5 inches. So we expect if the tool needs to move more than two and a half inches, uh, you're gonna see it pull perform a retract. So this one is set at 500. Uh, we see no retracts in the tool path at all. And if we do a quick little back plot, we'll see some areas Now, unfortunately, my salt is the same as my uh, retract motion. So let me just turn the visibility visibility of that off for right now. So these uh, brownish lines, that's repositioning motion. So cutting motion is blue, repositioning is brown. And given that this, to, this tool here is half inch, you can see that some of these motions are greater than two and a half inches. Uh, so you would expect to see a tool path or a retract in there. So this next tool path below it, is the exact same tool path and you can see I've made an extremely small value so 0.3 so it should be seeing that if it needs to move more than 0.3 of an inch between cuts it should be doing a retract and notice it's the exact same tool path as the one that was set to two and a half inches so this is where with some extra explanation on these settings is, is really needed and I, I'm still not fully on board with if these are descriptive enough but as long as we know what they do hey you can call it whatever you want but let's go on through and have a look at what these things actually do. And before we do that, we can explain this guy right in here fairly easily. So this, this is, uh, remember that motion I said over here that was brown, that was a repositioning move. This is how that move is, is done. So basically it's called a micro lift. And a micro lift is lifting off the surface you just cut. So this is the, where you set how high it lifts. And right now it's defaulting to 10 thou. And then you have a, a value here for the feed rate that it does that repositioning motion at. So if you're not cutting, typically you can feed extremely fast. Um, you could key in values as high as your machine is able to feed. Obviously this can't be output as a rapid motion because rapid motion um, really isn't capable of this. So it's gonna be you know a high feed value as high as you're comfortable with and as high as your machine can, uh, can hold. So when I backplot through this toolpath here, we can see the feed rate for our typical cut is coming out of that default six inches per minute. If I get to a position where we're gonna see some of these 
retracts and it's going to be that nice big one right here. See the feed rate? Notice the Z level. Notice the feed rate. So the depth of this feature is at negative 625. So that's why we're seeing the Z value at negative 615. And the feed rate's at 100 inches per minute. And that's all coming from that micro lift parameters right in here. Okay, so that's micro lift. But what about retracts? So retracts, in order for a retract to happen, so in, in order for this value in here to even be seen, we need to do some... Uh, enabling of retracts down here in these these pull downs and let me get out of this guy first and i'm going to come into this guy first right here let's turn our solid back on and the first setting we'll look at here is called when avoiding a boundary so we're inside of the the tool path and we've also chained you know machining regions avoidance regions any other geometry within the tool path mashcam can see geometry with inside um of all the chains you've selected and it can see when it's trying to cross from you know one side of the part to the other and where a boundary gets in the way so when we turn this on this is not looking at this value at all it's only looking at am i going to hit a piece of the part if so i'm going to do a full retract now if we turn this to never it's not going to rapid through the part it's just going to do a micro lift around the part so in this case when we say when you want to avoid a boundary It'll wrap it over the part to avoid that boundary. The next option is when we exceed a distance. So from the pull down here, when we exceed a distance, this is directly looking at this value in this box now. So whenever a toolpath cut uh, needs to move more than whatever this value is, so uh, we're at percentage of diameter, 500% of half of an inch is 2.5 inches. So if the tool path ever needs to move more than two and a half inches, it's going to perform the retract. Now, what is the retract? It's whatever you specified over here on the linking parameters page. Um, we're not gonna dig into the linking parameters in these videos. Uh, that's covered lots in other lessons, but that's what's triggering. This is what's triggering the retract and the retract is defined over on linking parameters. Okay, so that's the setting here when we exceed a distance. Avoiding a boundary, exceeding a distance. Let me go into a top view here. So there you can see we've got no retracts happening in this area when we avoid a boundary. When we exceed a distance, we do have these distances, uh, retracts in here. We also have some similar ones like this one right here. We get in both the boundary and the distance. Uh, this one right here though is unique to avoiding a boundary. So this retract right there we don't see when we go to just exceed distance. And that's where these next two settings come into play. We have uh, pull downs that combine the two, uh, the two other settings. So boundary and distance, you've got an or, and you've got the option for and. So there's avoiding a boundary, there's avoiding a distance. This one is using or, so that's gonna give you basically both so that we'll see these retracts and that one retract right there. And the other one is the and, so it must be both scenarios and we're only gonna get these uh, retracts here. So I think we've covered that uh, quite extensively and you know, even though the naming is, is uh, not super intuitive, at least if we know how they function, like I said before, you can call these whatever you want, um, but now you know how to control where and when retracts will occur within the dynamic mill toolpath.